the 10K. Want to get your thoughts on the defending world champ versus the Olympic champ. Final takeaway. Yeah, I mean, the weather was certainly a factor, so they went out slow. Uganda, classically, always finding a way to, like, get a pacer on their team, which is wild. That Uganda is able yeah. to, like, yeah, we get three spots. We're just going to use one of the spots for a pacer. <laughs> Imagine if the U.S. did that. Imagine if the U.S. was like, we're going to send our two best guys, but then our third guy or gal is just going to be there to to rabbit. It's kind That's of kind a, of mind blowing. A, it's kind of mind blowing to do that. But they're top two people. Kip Limo wasn't there, but Kip Limo and Chup the guy kind of deserve a pacer, I guess. So, but um, yeah, I mean, I thought to be honest. If it was going to be slow, there could be a chance you could have had some weird upset. Grant Fisher was fourth yeah. last year. Woody Kincaid showed they had a great kick. And I was like, hey, if they can stay in it, you never know. But Shepta guy and Borrega, they just showed that they are at a different class. And it kind of wasn't even close. Yes, there was that weird moment with like 200 to go, maybe 150 to go, where it looked like maybe they're going to catch Shepta guy. But Hey man, check the guys. He's good. And I'm excited to see him race Jakob in the in the 5K. Uh, I still think Jakob, mm -hmm. we'll talk about Jakob in this podcast later, but check the guy gets the win. Obviously, the time means nothing. Um, Kenya, though, getting a medal in the 10K, something that hasn't happened in a long time. This meet, mm -hmm. this race has been dominated by the Ethiopians and Ugandans. So big ups for Kenya and I guess Americans, uh, Kincaid finished 11th. Uh, McGordy finished 18th. But they just weren't ever in it. They As soon as there was a move made with like 2K to go, only Mo Ahmed was the North American who was able to hold on to that pace, and then the rest was history. But it was kind of a very similar race to last year. You know, there was a thought that maybe Chep the guy was going to get caught, but then, in the end, he wins by five to seven meters and uh, wins, they said, is his third world title in yeah. the 10K? So, yeah. I don't, now, when he made his yeah. move at the 450 mark, what was kind of going through your mind when you were watching that? Well, you just always think, all right, if you're going to make a move in a non- normal spot because typically you make your moves two laps out 400 out 300 out but 450 is like you want to get that extra 50 meters on your competition you're only doing that if you're extremely confident in your ability yeah. when you're not confident you let someone else do it for you but when you're confident you're like we're making a move at 476 meters because i just know i can do this extra 76 meters so when he did that i was like oh okay this is a very confident chapter guy he's confident in his kick and uh, he wanted to just control the environment. So he's like, all right, everyone expects a last 400 kick. I'm just going to go at 450, and I'm confident. I mean, it shows that he's experienced and the ability to dictate his future. He dictated, I want to be here at this moment. I want to use up this much energy, and I trust my body to be able to handle an all out 450 as opposed to only an all out 400 or all out 300. Yeah. So. I agree with you. I feel like it was a very bold statement on his end. He's like, okay, I feel confident. I'm just going for it and I'm holding on. And throughout the course of the last 450, he's just kind of looking around too. He's just like, okay, I just want to make sure I secured this spot and I'm just going to make sure I get to that finish line. So I thought, I agree with you. I felt like that was just kind of that confidence move i don't know if anybody was necessarily expecting it because as soon as the move was made like then the rest of you know that pack kind of followed suit 